Now the statue of former bailiff and uh, Lieutenant Governor of Jersey in the 17th century, Sir George Carteret was vandalised once more while red paint was splashed on his hands, symbolising blood. There have been calls for the removal of the monument in St Peter's Village, which was placed there six years ago in 2014. Now St Sir George is known for shielding Prince Charlie at Elizabeth Castle in Jersey and investing his personal wealth in the island. But he also had links to the slave trade. Now, after the statue was vandalised at the weekend, somebody uh, who we're told is a St Peter's resident placed a note on it. And this is what it said. History is not there for you to like or dislike. It is there for you to consider and learn from. And if it offends you, even better, because you will be less likely to repeat it. It is not yours to erase. It belongs to us all. So what exactly is the history and how can we learn from it then? Well, Kit Ashton is a PhD student in Jersey history and culture and joins us now. Uh, Kit, welcome along. Listen, uh, uh, just talk us through then uh, how Sir George was uh, involved in the slave trade. So, well, it's, it's worth saying, yeah, that it's, it's important that we, we know this history. And of course, that history hasn't been told. So that's the ironic thing about that sign. So, um, yes, so he, after his time as bailiff of Jersey, which um, went really rather badly, he was hated by Jersey people. That's important to know. He was a dictator, a violent dictator of Jersey. Um, after that time, he, uh, he, he uh, when the royalist cause was re-established, uh, he used that influence uh, and the favours that, that he then garnered from Charles II uh, to... Uh, to work his way up the ladder, basically, in, in the Navy, uh, became an MP, um, and uh, he was involved with various companies, the Hudson Bay Company, the fur traders, uh, merchants, um, but uh, what became eventually the Royal Africa Company was the main one, which established really for the first time a monopoly on the slave trade for, for, Brit, for England. Um, so they transported over 200,000 slaves in, in, in the total before they got wound up. 44,000 of which died. And of course, these, these statistics don't reveal the human story, the family, the communities broken, and the Native American side of it as well. This was, this was stolen land that they were uh, transported to that he, he was uh, rewarded with. Of course, that was stolen land. Uh, Native Americans that to this day, Black and Native uh, American indigenous people of uh, living in America are suffering that systemic racism which he helped establish. So that is the negative and difficult side of the history, uh, which hasn't been told and which, you know, quite dishonestly has been deliberately hidden away. Mm. I, I, I mean, as I understand it, he, he, he played a part in rescuing a number of Jersey people from slavery after they were kidnapped uh, by pirates from Africa. What do you know about that? Well, so they were English people. Um, he, uh, yes, he was part of, of the Navy. He was a pirate. He, he was officially a pirate before he got his letters of mark. Uh, and uh, became a privateer, which is a, 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 an official pirate, basically. Um, and so in, in his role over the years, um, I, I can't remember actually the year of that particular incident, um, he, he did uh, rescue these, uh, I think it was Morocco, that uh, they, they, um, they took control of the harbour and, and got these, these guys back. Uh, but how ironic that that is mentioned in, in, the, uh, in the propaganda, in the mythology, really, that has uh, been pushed out, that's uh, positioned him as a hero. And nothing of the, the terrible tragedy of the uh, appalling violence and, and the legacy of that violence. Uh, well, I think, I, I mean, Kit, that, that's, I mean, that is just part of, uh, of, of the sort of uh, movement of time, isn't it? Because, I mean, that could be said about any of, of the historical monuments that are across the, the United Kingdom. I mean, if you take uh, 2016, I think, the Cecil's, Cecil Rhodes Monument in Oxford mm -hmm. there, I mean, mm -hmm. it was voted overwhelmingly to keep it up at that point. Four mm -hmm. years later, uh, it, the, 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 the move, uh, uh, the the place place where we are socially and what is mm -hmm. acceptable socially has changed massively and now the conversation about bringing it down uh, has taken place and it seems to be overwhelmingly that that is wanting to be happened so that, that it is all about the discourse in society isn't it about uh, the timing it, it is right to, to to make changes on these things 
That, well, that's, that's right. Ironically, this statue was put up in 2014, and that's the damning thing, that public money was used. And I think this is the really key point, is we should always bring this back to our black community and listen to our black community in Jersey who find this statue so offensive. You know, I, I, I was speaking to a black friend last night who, who told me that she feels so offended by the fact that her tax money has gone to this statue. She, she made the analogy, it's, it's almost as if uh, a Jewish person has, has had their tax money used for a statue of Hitler. That's what she, a black member of our community said last night. Very strong words. And this, so that this statue was put up in 2014. We should have known better. And the people that that put it up should now um, admit this error and rectify that. Even, in fact, even the sculptor. I, I'm in touch with Laurie Zinglemel, who is the sculptor of the statue. She feels it should be moved, moved to a museum, and certainly that that story should be told better, or indeed a counter monument. So what, what 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 do you make of that? I mean, you're saying let's move it to a museum. I mean, what do you make of the words that you heard a few moments ago? Like one of the residents in uh, St Peter's yeah. is, is saying, "Well, actually, you know, this is a part of history, um, mm-hmm. and right or wrong. Uh, it's mm-hmm. just a part of history." So I don't have uh, the, the the words in front to me right at this moment but what, yeah, what do you make that. of that you've got the gist of it that's right yeah, so there's, there's a couple of points to make here firstly that how can we learn from that history if that history isn't told so it was dishonestly hidden away and secondly that a statue isn't just telling history a statue is a veneration of someone and this goes back to the open letter uh, that i that i wrote if you google you can google that an open letter to the state on the slave trade uh, kit ashton um, and it, it statue sends a message. It's the semiotics of monuments. It sends a message to venerate someone. George Carthray does not deserve to be venerated as a hero. He was without any doubt a, a brutal white supremacist, a monster. He was hated by the people of Jersey in his lifetime. And then he manipulated a, a, a megalomaniac king who, who established himself as absolute monarch into giving him stolen land and, and the imported slaves into that land. We shouldn't be venerating this guy with a statue. But his story, he's a very significant person, of course, in, in Jersey history. And so we should absolutely know about George Carteret. But we, we need to know, in, and that, that story should be taught in schools, it should be taught in museums, in appropriate ways, and certainly not by a public statue so, that is effectively so venerated. What, 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 what do you make, then, of, of the vandalism? So a, a, couple, mm. of, a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, it was sort of splashed in, in, in white paint. Uh, mm. uh, now um, red paint... Uh, has happened over the weekend. So, so what yeah. do you make of that aspect of it? Sure, that's a really good question. So this is uh, really, again, coming back to uh, sort of thinking about semiotics and how messages are sent. Um, and, and as a student of history, of course, this is, this is a historical act. It's a political act. So akin to the, you know, the tipping its tea into Boston Harbour, establishing uh, the, uh, America, and in fact, it's, you know, it's an act of civil disobedience. Um, so there are three questions here. One is, is the legality. Certainly, it's, it's, it's a crime. It's vandalism. Uh, then there's the, uh, the morality. Is it, is it morally justified? That's a matter of debate. I think certainly it is morally justified, in my view. But thirdly, is it, is it strategically wise? I'm not sure. I, I'm not, I think it certainly raised the debate and it's helped uh, bring these, these uh, hidden facts that, that, that were hidden away more to the foreground and it's shown the strength of feeling. But then it's also polarised some people who, who already have the, who have bought into effectively the mythology of Carteret. And that's really the question is, is like, is in order to win folks over and to, to, to get people to realise and, and stare in the face the true fact that this, this man should not be venerated, how do we go about doing that? I'm not sure that vandalism is, is, is justified, um, right. but it certainly has created debate. Kit, listen, we are going to have to leave it there. Unfortunately, it's a debate that could go on um, and I would love to have it with you. Um, But unfortunately, time is against us as we are heading into the news headlines. On the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker. Play BBC Radio Jersey. And on your radio.